Mertzer, a broker, believed that he had access to advance information about a government announcement that would affect the price of shares in the Royal Bank of Scotland. Patel paid Mertzer £620,000 to bet on movements in the share price. That was a conspiracy to commit insider dealing, a criminal offence. In fact, the government announcement was never made and Mertzer never placed the bet. The question was whether Patel could get his money back. The High Court said no, applying the reliance principle in Tinsley and Milligan. The claimant's claim will fail if he has to rely on evidence of his own illegal dealings. The Court of Appeal applied the locus ponitentiae exception to that principle, which is where the claimant does not go through with their illegal act. In the Supreme Court, the majority disregarded both the reliance rule and locus ponitentiae, and instead considered whether enforcement of the claim would be contrary to the public interest. Lord Toulson said it would be necessary to consider a range of factors, including the purpose of the law transgressed, any other public policy affected, and whether denying the claim would be a proportionate response to the illegality, bearing in mind the punishment was for the criminal courts. Lord Sumption disagreed. He said that this approach would introduce uncertainty and preferred the reliance rule, and that, he said, had three advantages. First, it gives effect to the basic principle that a person may not derive a legal right from his own illegal act. Second, it establishes a direct causal link between the illegality and the claim. And third, it ensures that the illegality principle applies no more widely than is necessary. Nevertheless, the court held unanimously that Patel could recover his money. There had been a clear failure of consideration, and Mertzer would be unjustly enriched if he got to keep the money. And so, by a narrow majority, the range of factors approach to illegality in English law has replaced the reliance rule.